Welcome to the Stewardship Leader Podcast, brought to you by the Christian Stewardship Network. CSN exists to encourage, teach, and connect church and stewardship leaders to help them create and lead healthy stewardship ministries in their church. You can learn more about CSN at christianstewardshipnetwork.com. Well, hey, everybody, welcome to this podcast and teaching from CSN. Uh, I'm Leo Sabo from the Christian Stewardship Network. I'm the president, and I'm with Dave Riggs and Chris Gillard. Dave is from Arizona, from Central Christian Church, and uh, he's going to introduce himself and tell you both his experience there, but also what he's doing currently. And of course, Chris is our uh, chairman of the board at uh, CSN, and both of these men have been part of, of our organization for a very, very long time definitely have a ton of wealth and information and experience. And I wanted them to share with us on the Stewardship Impact Workshop, which is a course in a one-day workshop they developed many years ago uh, that has been continuing to grow and being taught to many, many churches. But we thought we would do a deep dive about what this actual workshop is about. How did it come about? Why is it such a crucial teaching and content that we believe every church leader should go through? Uh, So let me just start with you guys. Thank you, first of all, for taking the time to be here. Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Tell us about, you know, you've been in stewardship ministry for a long time. How long has it been? Where are you today? What's your role? Uh, Let's start there. And then Dave, if you would do the same. Okay. Let me just go back actually about over 20 years. My wife and I moved out about 25 years ago to Southern California, started attending Saddleback Church. After being here for a few years, some friends just sort of started challenging me. I was in the financial services industry loved helping people to understand money, how to manage it, that kind of stuff. Um, But through going by going through a financial Bible study myself was really shocked and and frankly uh, appalled that I did not understand a biblical view of money. And so that, that kind of led me on a journey of of trying to understand things better. Uh, Eventually as a volunteer over 20 years ago, I started our financial coaching ministry and got involved with leading financial Bible studies and teaching financial classes and stuff at the church just as a volunteer. So it kind of spread from there to then about 18 years ago. Now, our senior executive pastor asked me to, to come on staff. And so that's when I, that transitioned onto staff uh, in the beginning of 04, you know, so the journey for me start, you know, started as in my own personal life uh, and still continues to this day, I would say, of course, in that, but started as a volunteer, starting the ministries there. And then that led to you know, eventually coming on staff in order to lead stewardship and generosity ministries here at Saddleback. Um, And of course, just not to leave CSN out of that, because one of the things that really enabled me to be effective in my role here at the church is my involvement with CSN and friendships like, like friendships with you, Leo and and Dave and and others uh, that really helped me to get better at what I do. Well, I uh, started my career as a finance manager for General Electric for 27 years, but uh, in my In my mid-20s, I became very, very passionate about really diving in, finding out what the Bible says about money, and then being able to present that as a volunteer in my church, which I actually felt like I would probably do, you know, for the rest of my career. But then 20 years ago, due to a number of very interesting circumstances, I left GE and got an opportunity to lead the stewardship ministry at Willow Creek Church in the Chicago area, which I did for seven years. And then after seven years, the church I'm currently at now uh, in the Phoenix area, Central Christian Church, asked me about 12 years ago if I'd be willing to come uh, join their church and help establish from scratch a stewardship ministry and really felt that that was exactly what uh, what God wanted me to do. And so for the last 20 years, uh, I've been doing uh, stewardship ministry full time on uh, church staff and uh, just developing classes and teaching uh, people, seminars, uh, one-on-one coaching, and just helping my church uh, develop a culture of stewardship. But I've also been uh, uh, granted the opportunity by my church to be what I call kind of a stewardship missionary and be able to help other churches um, establish and strengthen stewardship ministries. And we've been doing that um, both independently as well as through uh, CSN. 
And this is what's exciting to me about what we're going to talk about today is that both of you have been empowered by your church uh, to a degree, but also have taken upon yourself as volunteers uh, to continue to help other leaders who are coming into this space who God has brought or has passioned toward this uh, stewardship mindset and teaching others how to do that. And you both had the opportunity to do that over the last 20 plus years. And I know you're very passionate about sharing this. And part of what makes CSN such a great <clears throat> network of, of, of people is that everyone that, that's part of CSN, once they become part of the family, so to speak, they just can't help but offer everything they know to others as new people come in. And part of what I want to talk about is what you hit on, David, which is you you have a passion to not just do it for your church, but you've been empowered to do it outside of that. And I know, Chris, you did the same. So a few years back, you guys put together this stewardship impact teaching content that turned out to be into a one-day workshop. So we want to dive into that and talk about that. So let's start with why did you feel like this is something that needed to be developed? Uh, what's unique about it that wasn't being taught that you guys needed to get out? Let's talk about that. Well, it, it actually really came out of a conversation with that Dave and I were having. I think we we're seeing similar things in our own churches. And also just, I, I think naturally we had phone calls from other churches from different parts of the country that would call and say, what are you doing? How's it working? And that kind of thing. Um, and as Dave and I talked and just sort of developed a friendship, you know, I recognized that we both had a passion about helping other churches to figure this out. And that by putting some material together to help people uh, get started or help churches get started uh, in this journey of developing really a healthy stewardship ministry, because even though we'd only at the time been doing it for, I'll say several years, uh, we had way more experience than people that were just starting out. Uh, and there weren't that many churches really doing it. So it just generated, I think, from a common passion that Dave and I have to use the phrase missionary in a way, Dave, I, and, but to really to help other churches. And that's, that's what our heart is, is to help other churches start and build healthy stewardship ministries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we kind of uh, realized that the term stewardship was not well understood by a lot of church leaders. And, and, and there's such a depth from a biblical perspective of, of what stewardship really means and how creating a culture of stewardship and generosity can literally change a church. And yet stewardship was not well understood. And so part of putting stewardship impact together was to be able to provide church leaders with a, a true biblical understanding of what stewardship is and how they can incorporate that into the culture of their church. And what we found is there's a tremendous connection between an understanding of true biblical stewardship and spiritual vitality and discipleship growth. And that was what kind of spurred us on to create an opportunity for church leaders to understand stewardship, to be able to communicate it, embed it in the culture of their churches. And when that happens, uh, see the spiritual benefits from, uh, from that teaching and from that uh, incul inculcation into uh, the culture. So when you guys developed this, who was in your mind as far as who would benefit most from this content? Did you have in mind that stewardship leader or was it more than that? It was it some, some other group as well? Kind of all of the above. Um, okay. There were some very, very specific things in there for the stewardship leader to encourage them, to empower them, to give them tools and structure. But it was incredibly important that the senior leadership, both the senior pastor as well as the church decision makers, fully understood and, and grasped the benefit of creating that understanding of true stewardship, the biblical application. And so um, we essentially had, had both, both individuals in mind, the stewardship leader, as well as the, uh, the, the church leader and, and the wider you know, church decision makers. Yeah, I think what we found, Leo, frankly, is as we, as we work with stewardship practitioners or stewardship leaders in churches around the country, many of them volunteers, sometimes staff members, really weren't that effective or, or were sort of uh, not able to be very effective if the senior leadership of the church didn't really fully get behind the concept of embedding a stewardship ministry into the DNA of a church. So that, you know, because of that, the content 
is really uh, great for senior leaders. There's a lot of material in Stewardship Impact Workshop that will help senior pastors with, I mean, sermon ideas, teaching, that kind of stuff. And frankly, developing a, a, a theology of money, a theology of stewardship for the church that they can then communicate. Why is it so important that the senior leadership, as you guys put it, are on board with this? Why, why do you think that, that's a, so, such an important aspect of having this be a part of the church culture and part of the ministry that's offered? Well, you know, the truth of the matter is, and I think we all realize that unless the senior leader and the senior leadership get behind something, it really doesn't have the same impact of being embedded in the culture of the church. Mm -hmm. And so we, we believe that if we can get the senior leader to see how important this is, then, then he will then incorporate that into his messages. He will then support uh, the ministry and, and give them a real opportunity to make this part of who that church actually is. That's good. Also, um, if you could speak to that, to that issue, like what is the role of the senior leadership in this ministry? Because all of us have been in a stewardship ministry at our churches where we ran the programs and we did the teaching part of the ministry, something very practical and sometimes biblical or, or combination of that. But what is the senior pastor's role, for instance, or even the executive pastor or those decisions? What, what is their role? And why is it important that they fulfill that role for this ministry, as you said, Dave, so that if it's going to be effective, if it's going to be part of the culture, um, why is it so important that they be part of it? And what do they need to do? Well, I, I don't think it's all that complicated, frankly. I think, as Dave said, without the, you know, the buy-in, if you will, of the senior leadership, that lack of emphasis is going to be seen and felt by the rest of the church. So mm -hmm. it's you know, the, the, the culture starts with the senior leadership, the executive pastor, senior pastor, elders, whatever the structure of, the, of that local church is. And if it's something that that leadership team has bought into, it's something that's important to who we are as a church, then that gets conveyed to the church. From a role standpoint, sometimes what I find is, you know, leadership is sort of intimidated by the idea of starting a, a stewardship ministry and they're thinking, gosh, this is going to take a lot of time. It's going to be a whole other thing we have to do. And frankly, that's not the case most of the time. Generally speaking, it's conveying that authority to somebody else, a staff member or a, a passionate volunteer that can be put in charge of developing the stewardship ministry uh, within the church is really important to, to be able to give them the authority and then let them go in that area of passion for them. So obviously their role is not to do the, the grunt work, so to speak, the teaching of classes and helping people put budgets together, getting out of debt. And I think that's really important for pastors to know, because I think pastors are overwhelmed many times with the different topics they have to cover and the, the teaching every weekend. And I think the idea, I know this is this is something I came across when I would connect with a, a, another church that was looking to do something, is the idea that the pastor, the senior leader would be involved almost seemed like, well, why would he be? And And we found that without their involvement, and again, it's not to do the the actual ministry work, but it's the t the teaching from the pulpit. It's the preaching uh, that needs to be supported. Uh, the way I I have talked to my pastor about it, and I said, "Look, if you don't talk about it, or if you don't talk about it enough, where people notice that you talk about it, then they'll think it's not important. It's not important to you. It's not important to them. It must not be important to God. Because if it was important, you as a pastor, you would talk about it. And I think well, that's, that's true. Such an of any topic, topic, right? I, I mean, sure. any topic in the church we talk about. If the pastor never ever talks about marriage or whatever, then people just think it's not, maybe it's not that important of a topic. I mean, right. th that's naturally going to be the case. Yep. That's good. So what's the difference between the stewardship ministry, for instance, at a church that the pastor is not involved, maybe they're doing a program. They might be doing different types of programs. Maybe it's a small group curriculum. Maybe it's a, a seminar once in a while. Maybe it's a once a year thing. What's the difference between that and what you guys are teaching and talking about, especially through the Stewardship Impact Workshop? Well, we would really encourage every senior leader to be supportive of a stewardship ministry. Mm. And a stewardship ministry is going to be different from a stewardship event, primarily because oftentimes someone would go to an event, like a class or a seminar, and then afterwards, they're saying, well, what do I do next? And if there's no next, hmm. 
then, then there's no opportunity to grow and develop and for those seeds to germinate. A fully functioning year-round stewardship ministry provides the next step. We've gone to a class or a seminar. Now we can engage with the ministry, which will then help them uh, in different avenues that they can pursue. Maybe it's some one-on-one -on -one coaching, or maybe it's some, some, some group discussions, or maybe it's some uh, tailored uh, classes that are beyond the, the general FPUs and things like that. And it's that ability to go the next step, the ability to engage on an ongoing basis of discipleship, which makes the ministry significantly more effective than just an event. Yeah, I think that's the key word. It's discipleship. Uh, no pastor would believe that discipleship is something you do once in a while. It's part of the life of the church is what you are doing. You're raising and uh, growing disciples who will also hopefully someday do the same. And so if this is discipleship, then it's not something you can do or should do once in a while. It's something that should be done ongoing. You know, that gets to the point of where a senior leader can, or I'll just say a, a teaching pastor in particular, can make a huge influence. I mean, ultimately, when you talk about a discipleship process and you, you break that down into financial stewardship, I don't think anybody would say, gosh, you got to do a financial class every month as an individual in the church. Like, I don't have to go to a workshop every month. That's not the point. But we are in a culture that is influencing us every single day. And as a pastor, to be able to teach about what, what impact is and what influence is materialism having on myself and my family and my kids? How do I, you know, go against that flow of the culture? What are the things that are causing me to struggle spiritually because those are the influences of the culture and society on me and my family? And those are the kind of things that a pastor can teach about all day long without necessarily getting into the nitty gritty of how to pay off debt or budget or investing or whatever, any of those other stewardship topics. And I think just being comfortable in talking about those things is really, really important to embed that into the culture of the church. Yeah. And one of the huge revelations that we've found from senior leaders who have attended Stewardship Impact is that stewardship is not primarily about finances. Stewardship is about spiritual growth. And the idea that uh, when you read the Bible, you see that a person's relationship to money always affects their relationship to God. It'll either draw them closer to God or it'll take them farther away. And so this idea of stewardship as a way to increase spiritual growth and vitality in our churches is one of, I think, one of the major discoveries that senior leaders have when they come to Stewardship Impact. It moves stewardship out of the financial realm and moves it into the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. And that's that's why every senior leader needs to care about stewardship because of the spiritual impact far more than the financial impact. Yeah, some, sometimes even the word stewardship can, can be a little off-putting because people maybe have uh, some preconceived notions about what that means. Um, and, you know, if, if you read through scripture, Jesus talked more about money than almost any other topic. And yet, he never taught somebody how to pay off credit card debt. He never taught anybody how to do a budget that we know of. Now, maybe he did, but just didn't make it into scripture, you know, whatever. But what he did talk about is how our relationship to money and things impacts our relationship to God and influences our life. And those are the kind of things that a, a, a teaching pastor can talk about without getting too far into the nitty gritty. But when people learn that, hey, these are important concepts, how do I start to, to build those into my life? That's where having a stewardship ministry is really important in the church because that way you've got a team maybe of volunteers or individuals who can help people in those very practical areas. So there's a difference between preaching that the pastor's doing on the weekend and then teaching, which maybe be, might be done by volunteers through Bible studies, through practical classes, things like that, that to help the congregation to be able to live out those principles that the, the pastor was teaching about on the weekend. Yeah, I, I love the way you share that, Chris, because it's not this or that, it's both. In fact, they complement each other. And I think uh, this should be a real encouragement to senior leaders or teaching pastors that you don't need to teach the, the specifics of finances. If you stay on the spiritual side of things and just encourage and, and impart that burden to people that they need to see God's perspective on these things to overcome the cultural and the world's push to, to 
to look at money and look at wealth as a means to an end or, or as a, an end in itself rather than looking to God. But a pastor could easily open that door, encourages people, and then point them to the ministry to say, hey, this practically, you need to live this out. It's not theoretical. It's not just what the Bible says. Faith is good, but faith without works, well, we know it's dead. So what do you need to do? And by the way, if you need help, we have a ministry that can help you. And I think that's such an important uh, aspect of it that pastors need to understand, that they can hand this off to people that are more passionate and better equipped to teach on that. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful relationship that way because it makes the claim and the it puts it in front of the people to say, this is important, so important that I talk about it often enough to help you, but also we've set people up that God has passionately gifted to help you with the, with the basics of how to actually live it out. And I think it's a wonderful uh, marriage uh, to do it that way when you see it. You know, another thing that we have discovered by being embedded in the local church and studying this over the last number of years is that there are three important aspects to a person's understanding about money. Uh, we talked about the spiritual aspect. That's the part that uh, we get by understanding what Jesus said, what the Bible says, and how it influences our relationship to God. But we can't stop there because there are two other important aspects. Uh, you touched on the practical, Leo, where we actually have, as part of a stewardship ministry, the ability to give people tools, tools that they can implement to get their finances in order. And so a stewardship ministry can present, explain, and help implement those tools. But the third one is the emotional aspect of money. And that's the one that we don't talk as much about oftentimes, but the emotional side of money is often that part where we end up making really poor, harmful decisions about money. And so being able to teach the spiritual, the practical, and the emotional together is really one of the benefits of having a, a healthy stewardship ministry. Yeah, that's well said. Good. Well, in the time we have left, I'd like for you guys to dig a little bit into what SI, Stewardship Impact, does. I know that there's a specific modules that you guys cover, and you have this available, of course, both in a workshop setting, so an in-person event, which we do throughout the year. Uh, we also, of course, have an online course that we've developed or we've taken the teaching and broken up into two separate teachings because there is a distinction between, and I'd like you guys to, to talk about that, that there are two different sides to SI, one that deals more with the theology of stewardship, biblical, spiritual issues, and then, of course, the how do you actually do this? How do you implement a stewardship ministry in your local church? So talk about that, but, but give us an insight into what you guys do in this content. Maybe even convince a pastor who hasn't gone through it uh, of why this is an important thing that they should engage in. Well, we can talk about a couple of different pieces of it. I'll start with one of the first ones that we tackle, and that is really why it's important to have a stewardship ministry in the first place. So that's one mm -hmm. of the first things we address in the workshop. Um, we do that for a couple of reasons. One is we want to make sure everybody's on the same page and understanding really just why they would even be going through this content. The other side of that, though, is for maybe a, a lead pastor who's going to learn the material and then go back to then introduce that into the church and be meeting with elders and, and you know, other leaders in the church. Um, we want to make sure that we you know, ha have some good material and, and arguments for them to make the case that this really is important to embed into the church, to build into the culture of a church. So we talk about that uh, at the beginning and it really, why, why, you know, why is this important? Um, and we also talk a lot about theology. We get into what does the Bible teach about money? What did Jesus teach about money uh, and possessions? Um, that, actually, we've had a lot of, a lot of senior pastors that have said, gosh, you know, the best part of this whole thing is I've got about, I've got enough material for like eight or 10 sermons I could do after be, being in this class today kind of thing. So um we cover a lot of that material. And as Leo said, in the online version, we broke out the practical stuff as a separate class, knowing that that is predominantly of interest to people who are actually the practitioners, the people who are going to implement some of the programs and, and ministry in the church, where a lot of times lead pastors or executive pastors may not want to get too far down in the, into the nitty gritty of that. You know, a couple of interesting aspects relating to feedback we get after we present this, oftentimes senior leaders who've been in the ministry for a number of years will say, you know, I never heard this before in seminary. Some of this material that's presented is brand new material 
that has opened my eyes to uh, the, the importance of stewardship and, and the spiritual aspect. And so thanks for presenting this because I kind of wish I heard this 20 years ago. Uh, that's one feedback. The other feedback we get is, frankly, some senior leaders will come up afterward and say, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I was a little skeptical. They, they almost had to force me to come because I wasn't sure this was going to be applicable. But after hearing this, I want my whole staff to go through this, or I want my executive pastor to go through this. I want my elders to go through this because I believe this material can change uh, something very significant in the culture of our church. And that's partly why Chris and I are so energized about teaching this because we see those kinds of comments and we see those kinds of reactions when people actually go through uh, stewardship impact. You shared a testimony recently of a gentleman that came to an event we did last November, and he was a little bit standoffish, kind of crossed his arms the whole time. and But then at the end came up and said, yeah, I, I thought this was going to be a waste of my time, but this just blew me away. And, and that's typically the response that we get from folks, that the time and the value uh, of this is so much more than they ever would expect. Um, and that's such an encouragement to you guys. And of course, because God has given you a passion for this, but also has given you a way to, to share that that relates very clearly to both of these people we're talking about, the senior leadership and of course, that, that person that's called to actually stewardship ministry and the details of doing that in the church. Uh, but it is a, from our perspective and our experience uh, offering this over the last you know 10 years or so, that it, it literally is revolutionary. It, it just puts such a clear vision for what God is calling a church to do. And I love that you guys have developed this, that we at CSN get to offer this to churches Let's take just a couple of minutes to share if you guys would just encourage pastors that are listening to this who are thinking, hmm, is this for me? Is this something I should do? Make a case for it. Let them know why this is something that you would love for them to be part of. Well, one of the things that always pops up uh, in my mind is uh, Jesus actually being very specific in Mark 4, talking about the four soils and the four seeds. And what he said in uh, describing the effect of the third seed, he said that there are a couple of very important things that he wants us to understand, that, that the worries and cares of this world, um, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for more things, which is exactly what we're trying to get people to, uh, you know, to understand in the stewardship ministry. But then Jesus goes on to say, when those things get a foothold in our lives, then the word becomes unfruitful. And that's where I believe every single pastor should care about a person's relationship to money, because if it's a wrong relationship to money, then God's word becomes less fruitful in their lives. And that connects why this matters in terms of the spiritual condition of, uh, of the people in our churches. Yeah. And I, I would say that, first of all, that's a great answer, Dave. I think, you know, Jesus gave it to us right there in Mark four, uh, some major reasons why stewardship ministry is really important. Um, and oftentimes, you know, pastors come to, to us and, and the initial introduction is what, what they're really looking for is they want to increase giving in their church, uh, which is not a bad thing, by the way. I think that's, that's an, that's an honorable thing to think through. However, um, we will look at things a little bit differently. And what we would say is when you have a healthy church that um, has a culture of stewardship and generosity in it, it's when it comes from within like that, when people have a right understanding of money and possessions and how that affects their relationship with God, that is a maturity issue that will lead to a generous culture and a generous church, which of course means a lot more giving happening in the church. So what we would say is, don't focus on increasing giving in the church, focus on shifting the culture to that of stewardship and generosity. And when you do that, you will get way more giving than you probably thought you could in the beginning. And you'll have a much healthier church, which is the most important thing anyway. Yeah. And if you're doing that, you're going to develop people that will be generous for life because they'll have margin. They'll have both the ability, but also the desire because they'll know none of this is mine. It belongs to God and God will lead them uh, to use 
all the resources, including finances, to accomplish his mission. And if they're in your church and they love your vision, they're going to be giving to your church. Now, they might give beyond your church, and that's a wonderful thing. That's something we always um, celebrate. But it's so much easier to have someone that, um, that really is doing it for the right reason than trying to convince them to believe in what you're doing, the latest project, the latest vision casting you're doing. Um, it's about discipleship, uh, and it's equipping people for life. Well, exactly. I want to thank you both for taking the time to dive into this. Uh, Stewardship Impact is such a, an important teaching uh, that we here at CSN offer, and it's because of these two men that we have it and that we're able to offer it uh, to church leaders, and, and we want to continue to do that. So if you're interested, uh, you can go to our website, christianstewardshipnetwork.com, to learn more about this specific event. We do have an in-person workshop that we offer throughout the year. We have several events. Uh, we also have one coming up in March. At the beginning of March, we do our Christian Stewardship Network Forum, which will be the 7th through the 9th of March. Uh, But we have the SI workshop prior to this event starting. So that day from 10 to about 5 p.m., uh, Dave and Chris will be teaching this workshop in person. And really, I would say if I had an option to either do the online course, which is also available, or an in-person, I would go for the in-person. These guys, every time they speak, I learned something else. So even though the teaching is great, uh, the one we have online is great. Um, I think that that just being in the room and be able to ask questions and interact with them is so much more rewarding and beneficial. So I encourage you, if you can, attend the forum and, of course, attend the SI prior to the forum. And I think we'll make a, a whole experience much more rich because uh, you'll be able to have this context that we're all talking about. Well, any final words, guys, before we end this episode? Well, first of all, to say thanks for having us, Leo. It's really been a joy for us to be able to to lead these workshops over the last number of years uh, and looking forward to seeing a whole lot of folks down in uh, Louisville in March. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, again, thanks again. And again, if you want to know more about this event uh, and also more about CSN, uh, love for you to connect with us, subscribe to our newsletter. We have content that we're producing to resource you, the church leader, on how to do stewardship ministry. And of course, engage in this event. We're talking about the Stewardship Impact Workshop. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate your time. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.